All right, just for this little part, we'll figure it out for later after the break. All right, so first of all, we're gonna do, we're gonna try to do, uh, get our um, avatar. So I'm gonna sign in, enter my hub, and then do. That one. Sure. Hopefully, I can manage logging into websites right now. Okay, start. So, um, uh, we're going to grab my GLB file. And as you remember last week, it didn't actually have a face to it. So now that's open and downloaded. Great. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, this guy's Ricky. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to close my browser. And now let's go to Unreal, which is. And class, let's see if we can open it up this time. So you go into plugins and you search for uh, GLTF, I believe. GLTF is like GLB is if it doesn't have um, animations, GLTF, I think it has materials. Like they're, they're all the same kind of format, but um, each one has slightly different uh, use cases. Um, this won't come in as a skeletal mesh. It's going to come in as a static mesh, but we don't need those static meshes. We're going to, have to delete them anyway. We just want them because it brings the materials and textures into perfectly organized folders, which I think is super cool. And then we're going to leverage uh, Blender for the conversion, um, the typos and everything. So, yay, we're making progress. We got Unreal. Cool. So, uh, let's go to assets. And now I have a skeletal mesh. And this one's going to be Ricky. And then you go to plugins. Uh, we can search for GLT, and there it is, GLTF importer. Check it off, and then uh, you'll have to restart. I already did this to test on this computer, um, so uh, I'm just going to throw it in. There it is, Ricky. And there's not many import settings. It's just like, do you want to generate light maps? Doesn't matter because we're not keeping the mesh. And then is there a scale issue? Doesn't matter because we're just keeping the materials. Say import and don't care. Here's the meshes, but here are all the materials perfectly numbered and including all the textures, which is great. Save. And um, then there's a, there's a lot of different ways we could do this. Let's see, let's, let's still use the Mixamo for the T-Pose. So um, I'm gonna let this Unreal try to finish shader compilation, then we'll open a Blender, and then I'll show you to the retargeting really quick. Um, this is also included in the, in the tutorial on Rococo's website. They have another way, I feel is more hacky. Um, but I'll cover that as we go through. All right. So you'll see I have a face texture now. And it has all these, it's really well-made material properties, right? So not all of them are, are built the same way, depending on what um, assets are inside of there. So it's it's actually a way nicer way of setting up all the materials. Uh, and they're all there for us. I don't need the static meshes. So I can just delete those. Cool. Uh, minimize, and then let's uh, go into Blender like we've done before. And so now, what we're doing is because okay, so we're gonna we need to get the mesh from 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 Mixamo, but we don't care care about materials anymore. So let me get up. 
well, Ricky, great, everything defaults fine with me. And then um, immediately I could just export it. And again, there's no other export tools for converting GLBs to whatever. I'm not even gonna worry about copying the textures in, don't need it. I don't have any animation. Um, I don't want to add any thief bones. And then I do, I am going to port the mesh. So keep face. All right. And then say export to my downloads. Let me just say this one is Ricky for Mixmo. Cool. Browser. Mixmo. And again, the reason why uh, I'm worried about this is just uh, this is already has facial animations, facial morph targets built in. That's really useful for mocap. It's much similar to the MetaHumans. I really think we should stick with this or Meta uh, make human for uh, the time being. Um, upload character. Give the thing. And then now if I um, actually, I don't have to download the T-Pose. If I actually sign out and sign back in, um, by default, it will, uh, if I say download my mesh, it'll make it a T-Pose. Let's see if it does right now. Say next. Let's just say download. Yeah, so if I just load it in, it says, do you want to download it as a T-Pose? There we go. So this is, uh, this is one way to get the T-Pose. It's easier to retarget this way. It's a perfect T-Pose. Uh, you can change the, the mocap data to be more like the pose that the ready player me character is, but that's very subjective. It's not really precise numbers. And I feel like that's a little hacky. You can also put it into a T pose. If you're doing live motion capture in Unreal, you can put it in a T pose inside of uh, Unreal and make it a pose asset that you're driving your live motion capture for, but we're not really going to get that until next, next uh, semester, or next half of the semester. So I now have uh, this FBX. I'm going to call him Ricky. And bring them in. Um, yes, we want to not use another skeleton. We want to choose. Uh, let's bring in the mesh. It has some crappy materials. Don't even care. And then if I come over to my Ricky. Actually, I think I made a mistake. If I look at the skeleton himself, it's not in the T-pose because I said import animation. I'm going to delete that and start again. You're fine. Say, oh, it just thinks I'm re-importing it now. That's annoying. Unreal don't be smarter than me. Let's do a different folder. All right, so we're going to say, don't bring in my animation. The T pose is actually the base pose. It's not an animation pose. No? Yeah, OK. We will get the right one from Maximo. I did this earlier, and it worked. I really think that each one of these Ready Player Mirror characters are different, but you get to see um, different approaches. So I am going to put in T-Pose. There we go, download. Let's scan. And now this one is called T-Pose. Get rid of this one. Oops. This is downloads. Complete. Ready. Cool. Oh my goodness, you're pissing me off. All right, what's happening is it's referencing the old one. This is what it should be called. 
One more time. Or actually, let me just make sure it isn't a T pose. Yes. Bring an animation to it for hell of it. Nope. Does this matter to me? This doesn't matter to me. So what I was saying before is that you can actually put it into a T pose inside of. Right. You can bring the hands up. This is how I'm riffing right now. And then you have to bring the, the forearm back slightly. That's pretty good. So it's in a T pose. And then I could say a create asset, uh, create pose asset, uh, current pose. And then we have a pose called T-Pose. So I've already kind of made a T-Pose that I can use for anything inside of the Unreal Engine. And I can also export this for Blender. Oh my goodness. It is determined to not let me have a pose. Let's see, okay. Okay, great. Anyway, uh, then I can actually make this the default one, but for Right now, for our motion capture savviness, let's go back to Blender and bring this into Blender. So uh, clear scene, bring it in here. Um, animation track, don't forget care. So the whole idea was it's supposed to have a T pose, and I am beyond baffled on this. What's happening today? Uh, let's do the sloppy way of saying uh, that I can I can change it myself. So I'm going to bring in the BBH. What I want is just to have the T pose as the rest position. If I go to pose mode, and then I want to put these bones in the front. I can see him. This is what it should have done. And I honestly don't know why it's not. Pretty much. Pretty much. This is what I was saying is hacky and don't know what to do. I was doing this for quickness sake. So this is the way it should have come in. And a T pose. But the problem is, is that this is not the rest pose. When I go back to the pose position, it's there. And that's the problem with the Rococo plugin is that it's looking for retargeting it off the rest pose. So where is my Rococo? Add-ons, install, downloads, Rococo. I was using a weird version of Blender right now. Not the one I used last week. Wait for that to turn on. Wait for it to crash. Um, so what I've done is I've put this all into a presentation for you guys to have as reference. It's way more succinct than this. Um, elaborate demo that's going off the rails 100 times over. So I'll put a link to this one in the week five as well. So you guys have this. It not only does it go over the um, the, the Blender workflow, but also goes over Motion Builder step by step for you with screenshots. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Well, that's week five. 
make it a little easier for you. So um, we need to bring in the Rococo. Uh, we need to sign in through the browser. That actually worked finally. And then uh, the problem in the last week's class was that the uh, the FBX file wasn't bringing in hip bone. It was using hips as a reference point. It, it was working in every other piece of software except for Blender. So using BVH, you'll notice that there is actually a BVH importer for motion capture. Go to my downloads, grab human01. I'm going to update the scene duration to whatever the take length is, say import. And then um, one thing I noticed also is that it's huge. Right. I can either scale it or I can say delete hierarchy and import it again and scale it when I bring it in. So uh, human one and to scale, it's going to be 0 0.01. Or I want to export out of motive, I can also scale it at that point as well. And you'll notice that they're there together hanging out, same, same pretty much ratio. Okay, so let's go to um, Rococo. The source is beach walking. Target is armature, build bone base. Everything is perfect except for the shoulders sometimes show up as shoulders of arms. And again, I can't ever make it re repeat itself every time. It does it differently every time. And then we say, I want to do it off the rest pose. This is because it's based off of what the rest pose or the current pose is of the motion capture. So at this point, we're doing it off of the rest pose of the motion capture which is they're both in T poses. Oh, they're not. That's what I was get to. A rest pose um, for our armature is still not the T. So what we're going to do is, well, first of all, we don't need the mesh at all. We can just delete the mesh now because um, uh, we don't need to see the mesh. It might get a little confusing. Um, so I could delete it, and then I can actually add a, a rest pose to my, uh, my character. Otherwise, I am going to come down here to object, convert, Convert to mesh, the seal pop. And what's happening now is the bones are not connected anymore. I remove the bone, the meshes are going with it. Now I can I could select the hierarchy, say select um, all the bones, go back to the object mode. And then or actually back to pose mode and say apply as rest pose. Now when I come over to rest pose, look, the rest pose is a T pose. You can't do that with the meshes on. So now if I wanted to, I could select all these, then select the armature and go back to um, parent armature deform. And now it's been parented back on there. And the mesh is back on. Air, air pose mode. Oh, we got to select one bone. Uh, we're at rest pose. I have to go to pose position. And now we can see that everything's parented back on there. Cool. So this is only if I care about looking at the mesh when I retarget. Otherwise, um, it'll just, uh, I could just use the bones itself. So armature to armature, build bone list. Um, Again, the right arm, and then the left arm. Cool. And uh, so we target. It's going to think about it. And there we go. It's actually like more like 700 frames, so I can extend it out so I can see the whole thing. And the whole point of this was actually show, to show you how easy this is. And I'm sorry I fumbled on it a lot, but if you look at the presentation, uh, it's pretty much more straightforward to doing this. And it's just good to be able to use the Ready Player Me thing. Um, so I don't really care about my uh, beach walk anymore. I'm going to delete hierarchy. And so I just have character doing the thing. Export. Doodle -doo. FBX, and again, I don't care about textures anymore. I don't care about uh, the mesh anymore. I just care about the fact that I want to add any extra bones. 
And I want to make sure I bake the animation. And then I call this whatever I want the take to be, which this will be Ricky Beach. Actually, this is a human beach. Yes. And then export. Let it think for a second because it is 700 frames. It has to process that and bake it out. So there's a little spinning wheel. I'm confident that we're going to be okay, though. Boom. Then in Unreal, uh, again, we don't need these meshes anymore. Bring in our animation. It's going to bring in some junk files, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to make sure that we choose Ricky Skeleton. Uh, we don't want to bring the mesh in because we already have the mesh in here. And just bring in the animation length. There we go. Import all. Cool. And this is the one that's actually good. All right. Let's get our materials on there. And what's cool about this is that they're all labeled the same thing. So material zero goes into element zero. One goes into one, two goes into two, three goes into three, four goes into six. Just kidding. And everything looks great. Anyway, so this is I, I feel like the best way it should be in a T pose. I don't know what's up with that. I think it's because and I think it's because I have already imported a couple times in the same project. But there we go. Cool. So I was excited about um, thinking that might be the best way to go about it. So uh, the, I'm going to go ahead and stop the record for the Zoom. Uh, do do do.